we're trying to make this 2012 MacBook Pro usable in 2023. And in order to do that, we got to take care of a whole bunch of things. In this video specifically, we are going to be replacing the thermal paste on this MacBook Pro. We've done a couple of other things to it. So um, if you want to check out those videos, be sure to do that. But in order to do this, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a couple of screwdrivers. We're gonna need a Phillips double zero. We're gonna need a Torx T6 screwdriver. And then we're also gonna need a Phillips one. Um, you're also gonna want a spudger of some kind. Of course, you're gonna want your thermal paste and then you're gonna need to clean that thermal paste off with some Q-tips and some rubbing alcohol. I'm just using the generic kind that you get from Kroger. Um, at some point in time, we're gonna use some tweezers too, but we're just gonna go ahead and set these tools to the side. And then we're gonna bring up the MacBook Pro right here and uh, flip it around. And what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to take around, out the screws around the perimeter. Sorry for the glare, it's just directing right back up into the camera. But anyway, we take these screws off here. Notice these three in the top right, they're gonna be a different length than the rest of them. So you're just gonna wanna be sure that you keep those in a separate place and you put them in the right spot. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take these screws off and uh, we'll get to it. All right, once you've removed all of the screws, go ahead and take the back plate off and set that aside. Now set the laptop down and what we're gonna wanna do is remove the battery, which is this connector right there. So go ahead and take your spudger and put it in between the logic board and the battery connector and gently wiggle and pry until the battery connector comes off just like that right there. Move it away. now. The rest of what we're gonna be doing is focused just on the part of the logic board. So that's this section right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom the camera in so it's just on that section so you can see everything a little bit better. All right, so now that we've got a better look, we're just gonna go around the board using a Torx T6 screwdriver and unscrew the different screws all around the sides of the board as well as unplug the ribbon connectors. You'll note that there are a couple of screws on the fan specifically, um, and so be sure to that you keep track of those because some of the screws are a different length. So we'll remove the fan and unplug the ribbon connectors along the sides here, along the bottom, flip that up. And then there's a tiny, tiny ribbon connector right here that you're gonna wanna make sure you get. That one can be kind of sneaky. And just go around the board and make sure that you unplug everything and you've taken out all of the screws. Um, there's also a speaker assembly up here in the top right. And you're actually gonna use a Phillips screwdriver for that. And then you're gonna use your tweezers and unplug or kind of unstick the speaker assembly right there and then you'll be able to wiggle and slide the board out you're also going to want to make sure that you unscrew this charging port right here that was something i forgot to do and now the board's free go ahead and set the top case aside and flip the logic board over now this is the heat sink that we want to remove so we can reapply the thermal paste so i'm going to go ahead and come on in with a Phillips screwdriver here and we're just going to unscrew these three screws and then once we've done that um, the heat sink will just come right off and so here's our third screw right here now I thought these screws were captive meaning that they stay put they are not so they do come out all the way just make sure that you keep the spring that is with the screw and the screw itself together and you can just go ahead and take the heat sink off just like that. Now, I had actually recently reapplied the thermal paste, um, and so mine's wet. Odds are, if you've never done this before, your thermal paste will be very dry. So now go ahead and take your Q-tips and your isopropyl alcohol, and I just stick mine in the little hole right there, and I squeeze to get the Q-tip wet, and then you're just gonna wipe the thermal paste off of this processor right here off of the die. Um, the metal part is the part that we're specifically concerned about. Clean off as, as much as possible. Try and get it as clean as you possibly can. Um, but the metal part, the, the shiny part of the processor is the part that we're really concerned about. That's the part that gets really hot. That's, um, that's the part that you need to apply thermal paste to. So get it as clean as you can. And, uh, and then you're also going to want to clean off the heat sink. 
Right, and then here's where the important thing actually happens, and that is applying the thermal paste. You just use whatever thermal paste is available to you. I'm using some Noctua thermal paste, but you can really use anything. Anything new is gonna be better than what's on there. Um, and so you apply just a little bit. That's actually probably way more than I need, but it's really hard to overdo it with thermal paste. You'd have to put like a ton on there in order for it to actually be a bad thing. And so this is fine there. And then you just go ahead and replace the heat sink and you screw in the screws just the way you had them before. And from there, all you have to do is do everything that you've done so far, but in reverse, you just slot the logic board back in the way you took it out. And you make sure that none of the ribbon cables are pinched, none of the connectors are pinched. So you wanna make sure that those are on top of the board instead of tucked underneath the board because they all connect to something important. Um, and then you replace all of the screws and that's pretty much it. You've now successfully replaced the thermal paste. Um, this is just one of many upgrades that you can do to an old 2012 MacBook Pro to make it usable in 2023, 2024. And so one of the other things that we've done in the past is we've upgraded the RAM. We also upgraded the SSD um, to make it usable as well. Um, and there are a couple of other things that we're going to do in the future. But that's it for now. Really well done. And we'll see you in the next video.